Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Haraka, Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Musa and rule well. And Shalom to the whole full elect. This is Paya Allah. And the title of this video is Blind Do See. All right, and basically, I just have a list of scriptures I want to go into and um, build upon the, the, the title, all right, of the fact that the blind do see, all right, in this day and age. Basically, gross darkness is over the earth, all right? And Yahweh Shai is the light of the world, all right? But him being the light of the world, only, you know, certain people are so blind that, you know, the darkness is so heavy that it's blinded them to the light of the world, Yahweh Shai, all right? And the fact that we have the ability to see Yahweh Shai as the light of the world is a great blessing within itself. But it's not of our own will. And that's that's the main thing, all right? In all in all, it's the will of the Heavenly Father, man, which shows you how greatly he is to be praised and how precious this gift that we've been bestowed is, all right? The fact that we've been given it, all right, it it oh it, it echoes the the um it echoes the sentiment of you know, if you can't be used, you're useless, all right? And that being said, for the point of with such a great blessing, you have to utilise it. Because if, 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 you, if, you, if you've been given a gift and you're not utilising it, then there's someone else out there that will benefit from it more greatly. And that other person that will benefit from it a lot more than you, all right, would be a um, basically a member of the elect, Right, and the person that's not utilizing it would not be a member of the elect. All right, so you know, in that blindness, all right, you know, there's you know, it, it shows the the fact that there's a great blindness on the earth, it shows how precious the sight is. And uh, as another saying, as it goes, in the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. All right, and that's that's one of the main signs of the Illuminati, but guess what. We're the true illuminated ones that have both our eyes open, all right. So if they can, if if they can see with one eye, imagine what we can see with two, all right. We see both sides of the spectrum. We see the whole, um, everything in its fullness, basically, all right. So, without further ado, let's go. I'll start with this Isaiah six and nine, and he said, "Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not." And see ye indeed, but perceive not. All right, now this goes back to the prophecy. Perfect words being said when the, uh, an angel was basically instructed to blind the children of Israel. All right, and more so as we understand, you know, through the process of time till now, that basically the people that have been blinded are those that aren't the chosen. All right, going back to the book of Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter, it basically deals with. You know, it opens up dealing with our forefathers saying that all the great miracles they saw, the great things the Heavenly Father did for us, the fact that their clothes didn't wax old, you know, they still had everything, they were fed with manna, all the great things that happened, but still the Most High gave them a heart for them not to perceive. Basically, they were under the first covenant and that of having a stony heart, a right, towards the Heavenly Father. And they really couldn't perceive it. All right, and that held, you know, those those great men that came on the scene through time and time again, these prophets, all right, that basically had, could see, and they were there to rebuke and reprove, all right, Israel, all right, and then you had Israel, you know, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, died us, kill the prophets, you know, they were killing the prophets, but at the same time, you had men that were waking up other men that were of that number, all right. Until Yahweh Shai came on the scene and he broke it down, you know, why according to prophecies he was speaking unto them unto them in parables and they couldn't perceive what was being said, all right? Because it wasn't given unto them to get the kingdom, but it was given unto who? The children of Israel, all right? To, get, to gain the kingdom, basically, or the elect of the nation of Israel, okay? So it says in uh, verse 10, make the heart of this people fat, their minds fat, all right, doleful and slow, and make their eye their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their 
eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, being their mind. Basically, they they you know their senses are all in order to actually per perceive what the heavenly Father is speaking of. All right. And understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. So these these uh, individuals are basically appointed unto blindness unto the time of the end, right, for the sake of their destruction. Paul breaks it down in the book of Romans 11, right, about the, you know, the, them being blinded for the fool, uh, for their fool, to basically um, bring in the Gentiles, those that have been scattered abroad. All right. So now I want to go into this parable, or oh, not a parable, uh, this account of Yahweh Shai dealing with this this man who was blind from his youth. So I'm going to read the whole chapter the most of it and just you know getting where 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 i fit in so this is john 9 and 1 and yahweh shai passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind all right who did sin all right because why understand that the you know going back to the commandments to that you you can't hate the heavenly father because he will visit his judgment will come back to the third and fourth generation meaning what reincarnation all right because it's not on the parents to hold the judgment of the the child but the child whoever committed the sin it comes back upon them upon their head all right so again that's why they said what they said but verse 3 it says Yahweh shall answer neither have this man sinned nor his parents all right this man hasn't sinned neither have his parents sinned all right but that the works of the most High should be made manifest in him and the reason why he had this upon him was for the sake of this account that was about to happen all right this is why he was blinded verse 4 i must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work, all right? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, all right? So Yahweh Shai is the light of the world, all right? And the fitting soul to the time of the, of the you know, that dark time, Yahweh, that's when you, you know, the, 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 the uh, you know, at midnight, as it tells you in, in Matthew 25, you know, there was a, there was a shout, and basically, you know, you had to use that uh, the five versions that was wise. They basically trim their lamps, and you know with the oil in it, and basically lit up. And then the five that are foolish, they basically got caught out there. All right. So it says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. All right. And they basically they had that oil, the anointed oil, being the anointed Yahweh Shai. All right. And they had what the the light. All right. So they could see through the darkness. Verse 6, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. All right, keep this in mind. And he and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and I believe the Siloam is Shalach. All right, the pool of Siloam. You can look it up, though. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. All right. So he received his vision. The neighbors thereof and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. All right. So he plainly made it no. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Yahweh Shai made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought the, to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind 
and it was the Sabbath day when the Yahushai made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him, now he had received his sight, he said unto him, unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth the Sabbath, he keepeth, keepeth not the Sabbath day. All right. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. All right. So you had this. This was a point of contention. The fact that Yahweh Shai had done something of great, a great blessing on a man. All right. That they accounted it to doing works on the Sabbath day. When really the Sabbath day is a day of rest to do to what? To dedicate unto the Heavenly Father. So this is a, this is a work in that of praising the Heavenly Father, a show of his power. On, and on what day better for that to be shown, right, than the Sabbath day, all right? Verse 16, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of the Most High, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them, all right? Verse 17, They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he have appointed, opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. All right. Um, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me read that again. <laughs> Verse 18. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had believed uh, received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight and they asked him saying is this your son who you say was born blind how then doth he now see his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by the means he now seeth we know not or who have opened his eyes we know not he is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. All right? So he's of age speaking. Like, let him answer because that's going to go into it. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already. If any man did confess that he was a Mashiach, a a um, the anointed, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give the most high the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. So look, they even came round to the fact that the most high, you know, did this on the Sabbath day. But their main point of contention was what? The Lord. All right. Verse 25, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that, whereas I, I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did, what did he to thee? He opened, uh, how he opened he thine eyes. He answered them, I have told you already, he, and ye did not hear. What, and that's going back to what? Isaiah 6, all right, about stopping their ears and, and uh, blinding their eyes and making their mind slow that they can't perceive everything, all right? This is where it shows it perfectly. Verse 27. He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye, will ye also be his disciples? Um, then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that the Most High spake unto Moses as for this fellow. We know not from whence he is. But if they were really Moses' disciples, they would have understood that Moses spoke of him, all right? That there was one, one to come, all right? Him you shall hear. But they don't want to hear him, all right? Because why? They had they sat in Moses' seat and they didn't want to omit their authority to the Lord. They had great gain by way of dealing with the, the Romans of the time that they got all the gifts and the goodies at their perusal. They could do anything. You know, technically speaking, they had a consolation prize. And they didn't want to give up on that for the sake, for Yahweh Shai's sake. All right. Verse 30. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a, mar is, 
where white hearing is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is and yet have open mind eyes now you know that the most high heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of the most high and doeth his will him he heareth and this is why this man had this place upon him all right the blindness because for this account because he stand he stood firmly for yahweh shai all right and made it well known he didn't falter like his parents did he, he he said it plainly. Look, this guy has healed me of my blindness. And there's nothing that you could say to make me, you know, turn aside and say, no, he didn't do it. This is of the most high power. All right. Verse 41. Now we know that the most high heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of the most high and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world begun, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was, blind, was born blind? If this man were not of the most high, he could do nothing. All right? They answered and said unto, unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. All right? So they were cut to the heart, man. They had to just get petty on it. Oh, you were born in his sins, and you're going to teach us. But no, he had a point, man. And he was saying the real thing. And even the Lord broke it down perfectly onto, onto the, the, the disciples at the time. All right? When they asked who did sin because it was a common understanding of reincarnation and all these things, all right? And someone being born in their sins, that he wasn't born in his sins. He was, he was brought to be, you know, a poor point of contention and also to rebuke them and reprove prove them to show Yahweh Shah's power, all right? In that he'd been healed of him and that he spoke so well of him on his behalf, all right? To those that didn't believe in him. Verse 35, Yahweh heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of the Most High? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Yahweh said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh to thee. So what? He saw him and he heard him. All right? And this is what the Lord did. He plainly made himself known unto this man. All right? When he, the, the man made a request of who he is. Verse 38. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. All right. Instantly believed on him. And he worshipped him. He gave him praise. Verse 39. And Yahweh Shai said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see might, which, uh, for, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. All right. So the heavenly, Yahweh Shai being sent forth from the heavenly father, Yahweh, all right, was sent to flip the script and put things into order. It's right for order. Verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Yahweh Shai said unto them, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. If ye were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. All right? That's it. So let me end with this. This is the book of Revelation is free. And I'm going to start from verse 14. All right. This is going into, this is basically, you know, that clay. All right. The Lord made for the, the blind man. Verse three, I mean, verse 14, Revelation three and 14. And unto the, uh, the angel of the church of the La Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. It, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. All right, so the heavenly father, the heavenly father, three hours shy, he wants you to be all in or all out. All right, you cut. There's no straddling on the fence, because if you do, if you are, he's, he's deeming that like you're you're being cold, basically. All right, only spewing you out his mouth. Verse seventeen, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee, buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and 
and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that sh thy, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. All right, that being the point, anoint your eye, anoint your eyes with eye, eye salve. All right, that thou mayest see. And what is that? What is that? That's this these words. All right, the testimony of Al Shai being the spirit of prophecy. All right, seeing all of these things and being. At one with the scriptures. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he, and he with me. All right? So with that, man, I pray you edify to the next one. I say shalom, shalom.